How's it going guys, Chris here, and today we're going to be checking out all of the enemy types in Sons of the Forest, featuring lots of crazy cannibals and a whole bunch of weird freaky mutants, which are absolute nightmare fuel. So scattered all over the island are tribes of angry cannibals. There's quite a few different types of them, with many having their own characteristics, behaviour patterns and unique ways to attack. But the bog standard cannibals are essentially the main enemies you're going to run into as you wander around trying to survive. These can be kitted out with a range of melee weapons, armor sets, clothing and body paints, which vary depending on the tribe, season and even the time of day. And most of them aren't very happy with you being there, generally choosing to stalk you or provoke an attack, becoming more hostile towards you the longer you stay on the island, especially if you start butchering their mates. Despite being the more common enemy type, they're still fast, agile and potentially very dangerous, able to clamber up trees and hide away in the bushes to coordinate a strike, only to jump out of nowhere and bash you over the head with a chunky bone club. They'll usually be a bit wary when they're alone, often choosing to retreat from combat rather than starting a fight, but they do tend to get a lot more confidence when they're backed up by their buddies, which is why running into a hunting party unprepared can leave you in a bit of an awkward spot. Some of them even like to plop down effigies near your base too, to try and make you feel unwelcome, using intimidation tactics rather than resorting to straight up violence. How nice of them. Another common type of cannibal you'll run into is the Muddy, a more feral, ape-like enemy that tends to scurry around on all fours, crouching low to the ground. Muddies are trickier to spot in the environment down to their shorter profile and mud splattered camouflage, using this to their advantage by hiding away in the dense foliage and spying on you as you go about your business. These cannibals are much lower down in the pecking order, but having pretty much no tribal status, sort of seem like pets to the higher ranking ones, with them feeding through troughs and camps. That doesn't mean these little guys can't be deadly though, as although they might seem quite timid and generally more passive towards you, muddies are still very good at climbing and able to dart around really quickly, making them trickier to hit. So if they do become hostile, they'll use both stealth and speed against you in a fight, able to throw rocks and pounce over a distance to jump at you from behind unexpectedly. Someone who chooses to be less sneaky, but much more forceful, is the Brute. And as you could probably guess by the name, these are the tough guys of the pack, who are much more geared up for a brawl. Brutes are a fair bit bigger and more powerful than the standard cannibals, wielding heavier clubs and having more punishing attacks that can knock you all over the place. Aside from them towering over a lot of the other cannibals, the Brutes are nastier looking in appearance, covered in gory armour made from their victims and having a heavily disfigured face, which looks a bit like it's been smashed in by a baseball bat making them even more intimidating as they charge towards you. Brutes not only have those beastie melee weapons that hit like a truck and do some serious damage, but they're also capable of kicking you to the ground too, leaving you very vulnerable to the other cannibals which have joined in the fight, which is not exactly a great thing with these guys rarely being found alone. The muddies might seem like the lesser variants in the cannibal hierarchy, but on the flip side, the ones with the most authority within the tribes can be identified quite easily by wearing shiny golden masks, with these guys generally being the leaders of the pack. The golden mask variants not only get a nice shiny faceplate to show off, but within cannibal camps, they've also got access to their own fleshy throne, made of body parts and gore. Lovely. Aside from looking the part though, they don't really bring much else to the table, often acting like the standard cannibals despite having the higher status in the group giving them more respect from their buddies. Though it's worth pointing out that quite a lot of these leaders can also come in the form of the Brutes, which kind of makes sense having that extra physical power. Doesn't really give them any extra perks apart from that fancy mask, but at least it lets them cover up that mangled up face. The Brutes aren't the only powerhouses in the cannibal ranks though, as there's also another, much chunkier one, that looks a bit like a sunburnt bloke that you'd probably find in Benidorm. These are the Titans, which are basically the wrecking balls of the tribe, Large, highly aggressive sumo type cannibals dumped in red paint or blood, having a similar sort of strength to the brutes, able to knock you down to the ground, but doing so without any weapons, having only themselves and their momentum to deal high damage, crushing whatever's in their path. Aside from their powerful lunges and blows, they're also prone to charging and literally belly flopping you by throwing their weight around to dish out the pain. Titans aren't just a danger to yourself, but they can also be a danger to your handiwork too, capable of barging into structures to destroy them quickly. So not all of the cannibals are going to resort to throwing their arms around to land hits, or try and bludgeon you to death with some sort of bony club, as some of them will actually rather take you on over range instead, with the spearmen being armed with, you guessed it, a few spears, giving them hard hitting projectiles which they can lob surprisingly accurately through the air. These guys don't have an unlimited supply of them though, only having up to three at their disposal, 
and once these are all gone, the results are rushing at you with standard melee weapons, just like their basic cannibal friends. Just be aware of the spearmen so that they don't catch you off guard during a fight, and keep in mind that they've got a pretty good throw on them too, so if you don't have any ranged weapons to take them on yourself, you best get ready to try and find cover or ready to dodge to avoid getting impaled. One of the enemies you might bump into a fair few times is the Frenzied Cannibal, a super aggressive variant with higher speed and reflexes. Now these guys are definitely up there with some of the more dangerous cannibals on the island, as they're not only able to duck, weave and roll out of the way of your attacks more successfully, but they're also able to deal tons of damage with their own quick frenzy attacks up close too, which can be trickier to dodge and predict when to strike back. You can tell them apart from the normal cannibals down to them wearing creepy masks made from the face of a prior victim, giving them a bit of a zombie looking appearance. But they've also got very fast and erratic movements, letting them chase you down easily, even if you decide to try and outrun them. So for this reason, running away might not always end well. One of the rarer, craziest cannibal types on the island has got to be the Blazing Variant. He'll think nothing of dousing himself in high-proof spirits, only to then ignite himself into a ball of flame, quite literally becoming the Human Torch. This neat little party trick does wonders for the cannibal's intimidation tactics, at the expense of casually burning himself alive in the process. Might not seem like the smartest thing to do, but it does at least encourage this guy to pick up the pace and channel some extra adrenaline, letting him deal fire damage as he hits you while rushing forwards using quick swipes. It might not be a huge surprise to know that touching this guy, he'll also inflict some burning damage too, so you'll often be best taking him on with ranged weapons if you have them, while trying to keep your distance as best you can. Another wacky cannibal can also be found in the game in the form of the Charging Variant, wearing an antler-styled headpiece used to ram potential targets by frantically dashing towards them head first. If they succeed at ploughing those sharp antlers into your chest, you'll get knocked back on the floor and sustain some gnarly wounds. Though the Charger can use this attack to both inflict damage and close the gap on you quickly, giving it dual purposes, as if the attack misses, he'll be at least a lot closer than before, letting him smack you around with whatever he happens to be holding acting like the other cannibal types in close proximity. The fact that you can cover such a long distance in a short space of time gives you something else to test those reflexes, as you'll want to avoid getting slammed into at all costs, putting you in a vulnerable position on the floor. So just when you thought the cannibals couldn't get any more ruthless, we've also got an assassin variant thrown into the mix too, in the form of an acrobatic woman with custom made wolverine claws. Now this cannibal wouldn't exactly look out of place in a Mortal Kombat game, being one of the most agile enemies in Sons of the Forest, able to roll around, perform fancy tricks, and slice you up with quick lunges, flurries and spin attacks, all of which are very deadly and quite tricky to avoid, due to the assassin chaining attacks together in an unpredictable way. She's not only good at dealing damage, but also avoiding it, as that boosted agility lets her manoeuvre away from your melee strikes, and evade incoming attacks by rolling away to safety. It's fair to say that you don't really want to be getting too close to this one, so if you've got some extra firepower, That'll probably come in quite handy. Nothing a shotgun won't fix. Getting pursued by a gang of deranged cannibals in the dark can get pretty unsettling, but getting hunted by ravenous sharks in the coastline's murky waters can often ramp up the tension even more. Sharks can be found in the ocean and even trapped in certain underwater cave systems, and they're just about as dangerous as you'd expect, eager to take a bite out of you at any given opportunity. The ones around here are a bit like Jaws, looking like great white sharks with rows of razor sharp teeth. And the worst part is, you often can't even see them, until they're pretty much right on top of you due to the low visibility under the waves. With you being in such a vulnerable and helpless position in the water, this makes shark encounters all the more nerve wracking, knowing that they might be circling you and eyeing you up for their next meal. If you spot those fins gliding through the ocean's surface, it's pretty obvious that it's not safe to swim, but don't get fooled by the orcas that also share the waters too. These killer whales might look just as deadly, but they're not really interested in attacking easy to distinguish by having those curved dorsal fins. So things are about to get a hell of a lot weirder, as aside from all the cannibals plaguing the island, you've also got to put up with a wide array of creepy mutants too, very dangerous and hostile monstrosities which generally chill out in the cave systems, but will eventually make their way to the surface, giving you something else to fear. But the most common mutant you'll find is probably the most normal looking, despite still being pretty horrifying to encounter. These are the Puffies, pale humanoid creatures with long limbs, skinny bodies, and a face which looks like it's been shrink-wrapped by its own flesh, covering their facial features with a layer of thin skin. Because of this, Puffies are completely blind, resorting to using sound and echo location to track you and other potential threats, such as the cannibals, screaming to alert other Puffies in the area once they've found someone they want to attack. Despite looking a bit wobbly on the legs, these guys aren't quite as frail as you'd think, 
able to withstand more damage than your average cannibal, scurrying around on all fours to gain extra speed and beat you around up close with aggressive arm swipes. Though should you run into one of the rarer blue glowing variants, you can expect these to put up even more of a fight, able to soak up more bullets and endure more of a beating, also being a bit faster and generally trickier to take down. And the same thing goes for the stronger spotty variant too, with dark blotches covering its skin and a larger health pool to go with that boosted power and ramped up aggression, making them tougher opponents to take down. Cranking it up a notch now, if you thought the puffies were unsettling, the next bunch of mutants will make them seem fairly normal in comparison. The aptly named Fingers Mutant is another humanoid creature, only its entire body is split open from the front, acting like a huge gaping mouth surrounded by loads of creepy finger-like appendages which is able to spit out white frothy goo, sometimes seen in their domain along cave walls. They don't have any arms, so those finger teeth will be used to attack and grab hold of their prey. They'll relentlessly charge towards you and lash out by swinging their bodies around, using that gaping jaw to inflict heavy damage, and this makes them a pretty dangerous threat in close proximity, so keeping your distance is generally advised. You can slow the finger's mutant down by aiming your attacks towards its legs, with those being the only limbs it has to move around with. Though if you're unprepared to take it on, well you're probably best staying out of its way, with them being very ferocious in nature, always choosing to attack once they've detected you. So horror games and creepy babies pretty much go hand in hand, and Sons of the Forest does indeed feature a bunch of creepy babies, all out to make your visit to the island just that little bit more discomforting. These things are basically what you'd expect them to be, small crawling mutated newborns with stubby arms and a fleshy membrane covering their faces, kinda like with the puffies. These mutant babies are much more common within the cave systems and are usually always found in swarms, typically getting in the way of where you need to go. They might seem a bit puny and harmless on the face of it, but they're actually able to launch themselves at you through the air, using themselves as some sort of meaty projectile, inflicting damage as they make contact. The sheer number of mutant babies around ganging up on you together can be enough to make these little things worth keeping an eye on, as those flying strikes might be fairly easy to dodge, but getting swamped by a load of them in a dark cave probably won't be very fun for you. Though thankfully, because they're so weak, wiping out the horde shouldn't be too much of a difficult task, and if you've got a spare grenade lying around, you could potentially blow up the whole gang before they start springing around. The mutants certainly don't get any more pleasant from here, as our next one is basically two twisted bodies fused together at the hip to form a spider-like creature called the Twins. Down to the game's lore involving mutants being created from people merging into each other from parallel universes, we can assume that the right side of this creature is a female version of a person blended into the male version of the same person from another universe, with the end result being this heavily deformed concoction of the two mashed together as a single entity. Having four elongated arms and two legs at the back lets the twins scurry around quickly low to the floor, and even pop out from the ground to try and catch their targets off guard. The twins are generally less gung-ho than some of the other mutant types, often adopting a stealthier approach to combat rather than just rushing in and leaving itself more vulnerable. It'll pace around and pick up opportune moments to strike, sometimes even waiting for your back to be turned, only to pounce on you from behind. After staying in enough damage, the weaker feminine half of the mutant's right side will lose energy first and go limp, forcing the other half to attack on its own, or retreat from danger by clambering away. One of the most mysterious cave dwelling mutants comes in the form of Sluggy, a big blob of fatty tissue with a bunch of random arms and legs jutting out from it, sort of looking like a melted ice cream if the ice cream was made of humans. Sluggy generally lurks around in the cave systems, and because of its large size, it often gets stuck in cracks and crevices, blocking your path from the way forwards. Unless you get up close, Sluggy directly won't cause you any harm, mainly because it spends most of its time being wedged in rocks, though it will prevent you from getting where you need to go, so unfortunately for Sluggy, you generally best lobbing a grenade over and putting the thing out of its misery, showering the place in meaty junks while letting you pass through nice and easy. Another disturbing case of two human bodies getting fused together can be seen when you encounter the worm, which is basically the most messed up slinky you could probably imagine. Two humanoid torsos conjoined by a tube of fleshy, stretchy biomatter. The creature moves around in a pretty unsettling way, using its four arms at both ends as legs, reeling its way around the place while using that highly flexible body to its advantage. The elastic-like nature of the worm lets it travel around really fast without much effort, able to catch up to you really quickly if you decide to run for the hills or crawl over defensive walls should you try and hide behind them. Having such a long body also gives the mutant a much longer reach with its slams and swings, letting one side do a handstand while the other slaps you around. And with these things being so aggressive and eager to murder you, you're generally best taking it down over range before it's got a chance to shuffle over and wreak havoc up close. 
One of the biggest mutants you'll face in Sons of the Forest is a huge slab of walking meat called Holy, a pretty tall creature covered in loads of squishy heart valve looking openings, giving it the appearance of a living organ. This thing is basically the mutant equivalent to a battering ram, mainly using its size and strength to overpower its victims. Holy can charge towards you at fairly high speeds and slam you to the floor if it makes contact, having lots of unblockable attacks that can be often tricky to dodge, especially if you're in a dark cave. To make matters worse, it can also combine dive bombs into its charges too, throwing itself through the air to squash you into the ground as it lands, using its whole body weight as a weapon which you're going to have to avoid getting hit by as you try and land some damage yourself. Holy is vulnerable for a few seconds after each body slam, though, giving you a brief opportunity to hack away at it with melee strikes up close. Though as soon as it stands back up, it's definitely time to be wary again, with it able to initiate a charge at any time or swing itself around to whack you about in close proximity. And if this guy rocks up to your base, you should probably take it down before it flattens all of your carefully designed crafting work. So this next one's definitely the stuff of nightmares, as one of the most unsettling mutants comes in the form of Legsy, a sort of upside down creature with some very nasty characteristics. Despite being called Legsy, this thing doesn't actually use its legs to get around, walking on a pair of big hands and elongated fingers, having even more fingers sticking out from underneath to help aid its movement and latch onto surfaces. The legs themselves protrude out from the top of the mutants, which can be seen dangling around and slapping themselves together in a pretty unpleasant bone crunching way. This might look and sound revolting, but at least it is a dead giveaway to the creature's presence, as they might otherwise go unnoticed, blended in with the rocks and stalagmites in the caves, down to its abnormal shape. Aside from looking pretty horrible though, Legsy definitely gives you reason to be concerned, being a surprisingly fast and ferocious mutant able to pounce on you over distance and kick those legs out up close to deal punishing amounts of damage, and the fact that they can soak up tons of damage themselves gives you even more reason to fear its presence. It's a very dangerous mutant and a very gross one. So aside from Legsy, you've also got Armsy to worry about too, one of the late game mutants who starts to appear after you finish the story. You might recognise this guy if you played the first game, being a big mass of waving appendages which clumsily dashes around trying to whack and impale its targets using a bunch of arms and spikes, protruding from its messed up disfigured torso. Armsy uses powerful charge attacks and quick lunges up close, though it's not quite as good at tracking your movements, having less situational awareness than some of the other mutants, probably because it's got no head. This gives you better opportunities to strike with melee while it's either trying to get its bearings or while it's throwing a bit of a tantrum something that Amzi likes to do quite a lot. But with that said, you've still got to be careful of it quickly spinning around and slapping you with one of the many limbs it has, so using those blades and axes can still be risky business. Blasting it away with guns and explosives will be a safer bet, but of course you'll use up some valuable ammo in the process. Another returning enemy type from the forest is arguably one of the game's most nightmarish, with Creepy Virginia being a late game creature that can appear after the story is done and dusted. Being another product of human biology get infused in grotesque ways, this mutant is basically morphed from several bodies back to back, forming a very twisted looking human spider type creature. Creepy Virginia skitters around the place acting very much like a spider in the way it moves around and attacks its prey, despite only having six legs of course. Having all those extra limbs allows the creature to be fast and agile, often choosing to charge at you with its legs raised while kicking you around in close quarters, using spin attacks and lunges, often making it awkward to face up close with your melee weapons. But keeping your distance isn't always going to be an easy thing to do, as aside from rushing towards you, the mutant can also leap through the air and pounce on you with a range too, closing the gap while knocking you to the floor, should it land on your head. So having multiple ways to attack and manoeuvre makes Creepy Virginia another thing that you might need to worry about if you bump into it while trekking through the woods. One of the less common enemies you'll mainly find within certain cave systems is a mysterious creature called the Demon, a somewhat humanoid looking monster with a slender body structure and elongated skinny limbs. Unlike most of the other creatures plaguing the island, humans aren't freaky mashups of human anatomy, acting as individual entities despite still looking like they're from a totally different planet having an unnatural physique and a face like some sort of alien vampire. They're jittery little things that scamper around on all fours and jump around like apes, making them animalistic in nature and able to travel around quickly with those long gangly legs. Having those extended limbs also gives the demons better reach with their attacks too, stretching out to jab you up close while being able to launch their hind legs forwards overhead, sort of resembling the scorpion tail stabbing its prey. These guys probably get their name due to them thriving in the magma filled hell cave and with them also being fended off and ignited by using the holy cross, scaring them away and eventually even killing them if you keep waving it around in their direction. 
But aside from the basic demons, you'll also run into a huge variant in the Hell Cave, and sometimes outside too, after completing the story. Though this one's not only a lot bigger than normal, but it's also got its own multiple ways to attack and retreat, acting like a mini boss with more health and power. The demon boss uses a lot of familiar moves to its smaller counterparts, but can also cling onto the cave ceiling to get away from your close range attacks, along with being able to leap over distance to both cover ground quickly and throw you backwards. You're generally best shooting the hell out of it while it's clambering around above your head, and using guns to keep whittling its health down from a safer distance, with its short range attacks being brutal, having more reach than the basic demons because of those even longer limbs. So just a quick word of warning, the next couple of enemies or bosses tie into the game story, so the rest of the guide might have some possible spoilers. The main reason why you're on the island in the first place is to trap down a multi-billionaire family, Edward and Barbara Pufton, along with their daughter Virginia, who's got no relation to the creepy mutants that we talked about earlier. Virginia can actually be found and befriended, but it's a totally different story for her parents, who wind up becoming mid-game bosses, with the duo popping up in the banquet hall. To take the form of Puffies with extra health and strength, easily distinguished by their clothes and overall appearance. Plus, they also happen to be backed up by a load of normal Puffies too, making the fight even trickier and more chaotic. The pair of bosses are much more aggressive and generally have better situational awareness than the standard Puffies, allowing them to hunt you down relentlessly, attacking with higher speeds and more powerful strikes, able to stagger you while leaving you vulnerable to the other Puffies assisting in the fight. You might want to stock up on ammo before attempting this one, as guns will probably help you out quite a lot, letting you keep away from those arm pummels while allowing you to deal with multiple targets at once, without getting absolutely swamped. So the main bad guy in Sons of the Forest is an agent called Jian Yu Jong, who pops up a few times during cutscenes, but eventually becomes the final boss at the end of the game's story. Unfortunately for Jian Yu, he gets transformed into a huge monstrosity by the Golden Cube, an artifact which is causing all of the mutations on the island and by becoming a big mass of flesh and tissue, this makes him an extremely powerful opponent, having multiple different ways to deal lots of damage. He can pick up crashed helicopters and use them as a club to smash you around, and also able to spawn other mutants by spitting them out from a mouth-like opening in Jian Yu's stomach. He's a lot more agile than he looks, with his attacks having quite a lot of reach, able to charge and pounce on you too, making it even riskier to attack up close with melee weapons. So those bombs and guns are going to come in pretty handy, allowing you to deal damage from a safer distance you've got to keep jumping out of the way when he comes rushing over, and you've also got to watch out for rocks launched through the air, along with all those other nasty mutants litter in the combat zone, all of which could catch you off guard if you're not being careful. But eventually, when you dish out enough damage, Yanyu will fall along with all of those spawned minions, ending the fight, thus allowing you to either escape the island or choose to stay behind. So that's it for this one, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, and if you want to see more guides just like this, checking out enemy types and bosses from other games, maybe consider popping over to my channel to take a look at some of those, and subscribing if you want to see more of them in the future. Anyway, thanks for watching, have a good day, and I'll be seeing you in the next one.